Wonder Woman grammar tutorial. We're going to handle diacritics, elision, and crassus, and the four clauses we need to worry about for the national Greek exam beginning level. So let's look at diacritics. Diacritics, let's talk about breathing. Before every initial vowel, you have either a rough breathing a, or a smooth breathing, which may is basically the vowel. Uh, now, the rough breathing can occur with the uh, diacritic of the uh, accent mark. So, uh, if we have hodos, because notice the rough breathing, it goes this way. But if it's a smooth breathing, it goes odos. Diphthongs, which are two vowels working together, take the breathing over the second vowel. Hyreo versus ireo. And remember, rows are kind of vowels, so therefore they have a, a rough breathing over them. There are three accents in Greek. Accents can go over three syllables. Don't worry about it. There won't be a quiz on where to put the accent. But the acute is at a nice 45-degree uh, angle. Um, and it will occur over certain vowels. Kalos, daimon. Don't worry about how it sounds. It's just that's the code. Uh, circumflex, a circular mark over that indicates a long. <laughs> the U Doran two gay. A grav occurs over the last vowel only if a word follows. So it would normally be an acute, but a grav is like the uh, opposite of a acute. So you rotate it uh, ninety degrees, and you end up with a ton. Or uh, also you end up with uh, anything else. Tain. Theoi because these words follow. All right, let's cover them. And the following Greek sentence includes, oopsie, here we go. Uh, so what do we have here? We have an acute, we have uh, a lesion mark, and we have a rough breathing. So it looks like it's a, a lesion, which is oddly placed. All right. How to has an example, and I made it larger, of a smooth breathing because the vowel's going away. Kalo, that's the circumflex. All right, let's take a look at elision. We just talked about elision, so here it is. When you end with a word that ends with a vowel and begins with a vowel, you often lose the first element. So ala would be al age. Notice the elision is marked with a little uh, apostrophe. And da and Ka enea becomes endok enea. F is shortened from heotown because the the rough breathing swips over to the p and the a, the p and the h becomes f. So f heotow. Eke moi, you lose the an, uh, initial uh, uh, the last yoda on. Genoito on would be genoit on. Elision only occurs at the end vowel. Crassus is when you put the two words together, like it. All right. <coughs> it's a contraction, and you'll tell it because you will have a rough breathing in the middle of it. So tala from ta'ala. So al amos is, you see the word begins with a vowel, ends with a vowel. So therefore, that would be illusion. This is one word. Notice the rough breathing's in the middle of it, so it's crassus. Not found in this segment, al homos. Well, we have, oopsie, we have here an acute, so that's found with homos. Uh, we have no crassus because there's not one word. And we have a rough breathing, that's found. So what's not found here is... A crassus. A crassus is two words becoming one. Let's talk about clauses, two clauses together, the relative adverb and the causal clause. Relative adverb clauses, at this stage, all you have to worry about for the national is hote, uh, which means when. So the hour comes when uh, neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. So translated as a temporal clause, when. Causal clauses are signified by hoti, and they, or they could also be by a pay, a pay debt, um, and just like we also saw for relative clauses. So, haughty, uh, because you do not wish. So, 
Here we have epe, which is a relative adverb clause of when, temporal when. We also have hati. Now we check here, blessed are the poor in spirit because we're dealing with a causal clause. Epe, uh, and when, so therefore it's a relative adverb or temporal clause when. Let's talk about two other clauses that we need. The hoste can it signifies a result or a compliment clause. Um, so that uh, it can either be signified by the indicative. In this level, it's usually signified by the indicative so that they were fleeing. Uh, but it could also occur with the infinitive, right? I have uh, uh, ships so that I could catch their vessels. So hoste could occur with the infinitive as well. We also have to worry about indirect statement, which is haughty. Haughty is a direct indirect statement. Thus, they say it's, it's subordinate to a verb of saying. So any form of saying, they say that uh, we are already uh, sufficient. All right. So let's see here. We see haughty could either be a because, causal clause, or an indirect statement. But look at the verb. I say truly to you, so it's subordinate to a verb of information processing, saying, deeming, thinking. So therefore, it's an indirect statement. Hoste plus the, uh, in this case, infinitive. So therefore, it's a uh, complement clause or also called a result clause. So that hoste, so that always. Epe is... Uh, dealing with when Theseus uh, desires to go to Crete. So we're dealing with a relative adverb clause, when. All right, well, that takes care of Wonder Woman. Uh, watch the uh, uh, slideshow if you need to, double check, and uh, good luck.